Hello, Michael Bull here with the Commercial Real Estate Show. We're Recon 15 in Las Vegas. We have Bobby Tobman here with us at the Tobman Company. And Bobby, thanks for joining us today. Delighted to be here, Michael, and welcome to our booth. Oh, we appreciate it. Nice booth here. You know, it seems like there's not been a lot of development in retail, but you guys are developing all over the world, all over the U.S. Tell us about some of your new developments. Well, that's right. We're known as the developer of regional malls and we have the highest and best properties about half of our properties a little more actually are in the top 50 of all those properties in the united states so we're known for our class a properties and we're also known as i said to be the developer so we opened a big project in sarasota florida in october we just opened a big project in san juan with nordstrom's and Sachs. the the one in sarasota's was Sachs, dillard's and macy's we're under construction in hawaii with international marketplace right in on Calicala Boulevard, right in the heart of Honolulu, literally at the 50-yard line. We have Saks as our anchor. It's going to be a wonderful project. And we also have three projects under construction right now in Asia, two in China, one in Xi'an and Zhengzhou, and then another one outside of Seoul in Henan. Big project, 1,700,000 square feet with Shinsegi as our partner. The two in China are with Wafujing. So we're going to deliver about four, and a half, four million feet uh, in the next uh, 15, 18 months, uh, uh, in, you know, into our company. And we've just delivered those two big projects, Sarasota and San Juan. So we really do have a lot going on on the development front. And that's great to hear. And, and these tenants that you're talking to, so you're, you're in touch with a lot of tenants, obviously, in all your centers and these new centers. Are there some trends you're seeing with tenants who are uh, going into new locations today? Well, the big international brands, uh, whether fast fashion, whether luxury, whether somewhere in between, are expanding you know, wherever they can. So you see uh, companies like Zara, like Uniqlo, like Fast, fa I mean like uh, Forever 21 or H&M. You, know, you see all of them expanding all over the world. And whether they're building in China, whether they're building in San Juan, or whether they're building uh, in Sarasota, they're looking for great locations. The same thing is true of a Louis Vuitton who just opened with us in San Juan. Uh, they're, they're working with us elsewhere. So you, you have uh, these brands that have built their reputations that are just amazing, uh, uh, well-known brands that really bring something to a project. So what customers are looking for are those unique brands. In San Juan, as an example, 60% of our tenant base is completely unique to the whole island. So there's over three and a half million people in Puerto Rico and then really all of Latin America that you know, we have the unique brand that isn't going to be found anywhere else uh, for that group of people and the tourists that populate there. In Sarasota, over 50% of our brands were unique to that market. So it is very common for us to try to find that unique destination, and it's part of what brings more shoppers to our centers and makes us really these great Class A properties. That's great, and I think some people are under the impression that you know, retail is not selling well, at least in the brick and mortar stores, but you guys are seeing something different on the, the sales per square feet in your centers, right? Well, our centers average over $800 a foot. It's about $200 a square foot higher than anybody else uh, in our sector. But we've really embraced technology as part of uh, what we do in every way. And when, when you think about brick and mortar, it's really the heart of an omni-channel retailer. It, it's about the brand, it's about the inventory, it's about being a warehouse system. You think about Macy's with 800 stores that are all over the United States. Think how easy it is for them to do really a just-in-time delivery to wherever they want to be with a customer. They can be a, a service center for pickup, for delivery, for online orders. So you, you've got so many advantages if you have a brick and mortar store. So what you're seeing is all these online only players, retail players, actually move to begin to open up stores. Even Amazon has begun that process of trying to find how they can have a brick and mortar presence. In these new developments, Bobby, what might surprise people as far as technology that they might experience when they go to these new centers? Well, we have all kinds of wayfinding. We're creating all kinds of parking apps. Uh, we're, you know, by permission marketing on individual stores. So when you're walking by the gap, if they happen to have just gotten in the size six or size eight in the shape and fit that you want, they'll be able to tell you that, that it's there. 
But what we're seeing is that people are doing tremendous editing on their mobile devices before they actually come to the shopping center. Often it's as much as 70% of shopping today is now being looked at first before they actually go to the mall. So rather than shop a whole variety of stores and take their time to look and edit as it were physically, what they're doing is editing online. And then they're very directly going to less stores, but actually buying more, the conversion rates are much higher and tenants are doing better. So that as we see our sales productivity move up, uh, traffic is, is good and, and what we're seeing is stay times are actually increasing. So all of these things, are they're all helping each other. Technology is actually you know, helping our business grow. And I guess the larger tenants uh, are good at that, but are you guys also helping some of the smaller shop tenants with technology in these new developments? Uh, are you having to pull them along a little bit, or do all the tenants kind of come with their technology in hand? Well, I think the smaller tenants are having to learn at perhaps a little different pace because they don't have the ability that the larger tenants do to be able to really put resources on that, both people and, and financial resources. So we are helping them wherever we can. Uh, but ultimately, our view is that to be a successful retailer, as you look down the road, you're going to have to be omni-channel. You're going to have to be very proficient at all of the ways of technology. Remember, technology isn't just uh, uh, touching the customer. I mean, it's critically important how you touch the customer, but it's how, it's how the, 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 the inventory systems work. It's all the back of the house stuff as well. It's how the logistics chain works. And so there, there's so many opportunities for retailers to become more efficient, become more productive, and more profitable using technology. So if they're going to compete in the world with the larger brands, they have to have a unique positioning, and they also ultimately have to understand and embrace technology. And technology is, is the leading factor today, and, and the omni-channel is important. And in your new developments, you're incorporating that you talked about some of the new developments that you have. Are you going to keep up that pace? I mean, these size developments that you do take a long time to get started. You guys going to continue this pace? It seems like there's not enough new construction. You know, when you look at historically, you know, new supply levels are really low. It seems like the economy is coming back with omni-channel. It seems like there's going to be more demand. You guys going to keep up uh, this pace? Are there any new developments you can tell us about uh, today? Well, we are working on a project in Miami that we hope to start construction this year with Bloomingdale's and Macy's as our announced anchors uh, and our partners, the Forbes Company, who also are partners in two other very successful projects. But when you look at expansion of supply of regional mall space, it's roughly a half a percent a year. And most of that is expansions of existing very successful assets. There are very few new projects being built. Generally, it's about one a year in the whole United States. So there's a sense that demand and supply are very much in balance. And what you're seeing is, you know, voids or gaps in markets. When we opened in Sarasota, there really wasn't a great project anywhere in the market. There hadn't been anything open in a new project in 25, 30 years. And there was a need, there was an absolute demand for that kind of a modern shopping center that really offered the customer wide choice comparative shopping opportunity in one destination. Same thing is true as in, in San Juan. There, there was no Nordstrom's, there was no Saks, not just in Puerto Rico, but anywhere in the Caribbean or Latin America. So this was an opportunity to bring to a customer base that needed a, a, an upscaled environment those two stores. Well, we also brought a whole bunch of luxury stores like Louis Vuitton, like Gucci, like Versace, like uh, Giuseppe Zanotti. I mean, I could go on and on. So that we also brought a luxury element to the island and that tourism opportunity that never existed. So when, when we're building something, we're looking for that needle in the haystack. In Hawaii, it's exactly the same thing. Now, in a market like Asia, there's just general demand. There's a need for more supply. And what we're doing is really capturing that opportunity. And if you look back 50 years in the United States, it, it really China is on steroids, growing in the same way that 50 years ago, we began building this new distribution system at the time that was called the Regional Shopping Center. It was a new way of goods and services being delivered to the customer. Very efficient, very customer-friendly shopping experience. The development of the future. Bobby, thanks for joining us.
We're delighted to have you, Michael. Enjoy your ICSC. Thank you. Michael Bull at ICSC Recon 15 in Las Vegas for the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Commercial Advisors, a great place to do business. Visit bullrealty.com. Realnex, a comprehensive and powerful suite of commercial real estate tools at an incredibly low price. Visit realnex.com. That's R-E-A-L-N-E-X. Excelligent, the resource professionals use for commercial real estate information. Visit Excelligent.com. That's X-C-E-L-I-G-E-N-T. Commercial Search, the source to market and source available properties for sale or lease. Visit CommercialSearch.com. For more information on these great companies or for additional videos, podcasts, or articles, visit CREshow.com.